just about to say, John, I know I'm supposed to be professional on this one, but don't remind me how close we were back in 2011. <laughs> Well, these Huskies, they know how close that Georgetown likes to play it inside. What is this defense we're seeing at the start? Well, right now they're showing um, a 2-1-2 two, two with a, some matchup responsibilities. And you see in the middle there is Jillian Archer, who's the sort of the quarterback in terms of communicating. And here's Kelsey Ransom with the strip, highlighted her in the open, and it appears you're clairvoyant. There's a quick bucket. Yeah, Chelsea uh, Ransom, or Kelsey, excuse me, she's very athletic, and, and I think you see that. Last game she had four blocks, and even... Some would say they were bad defensive plays, but because of her length, she was able to recover. Paige Beckers did not play last time these teams met. Flip and wide open, Kristen Williams. Her shot had to been off, and she drains her first. That's a big deal, John. Kristen Williams um, uh, was an offer in the last matchup versus Seton Hall, and she's someone that's going to be important if this Connecticut Husky squad is going to go after their big goals in terms of the NCAA tournament. You surprised at all to see the staggered pressure from UConn at the start? No, I'm not, because I think Gino wants to see his team work on some different things. Obviously, this was a big week for them, taking on South Carolina to start the activity, but I think you set small goals within your locker room, and you have this opportunity to work on them. Three ball off for Milan Bolden Morris, Boston College transfer. In rhythm, Williams feeling it off, tipped, controlled by Bolden Morris. That's been one of the weaknesses for Georgetown. They're a young team. Three young ladies opted out due to COVID-19. Their top rebounder didn't return, and Anita Kaleva due to visa issues from her native Croatia. That shot off. And the shooting has been perhaps the most suspect piece for Georgetown, but they bring it defensively. UConn, a tough team to defend. Oh, the tic-tac-toe passing and a trip to the free throw line for Olivia Nelson Adota. Does any team in America pass better than UConn? Uh, well, you know, I got to think over my Rolodex. That's a big question, John. I will say that UConn is certainly one of the better passing teams. And in fact, when Olivia Nelson Odota is passing, that's truly um, when they, they're hitting their sweet spot. Coach Oriyama talked about the Marquette performance in which she was handling the ball, passing the ball. You even saw her passing, particularly on those backdoor cuts against South Carolina earlier this week. Foul went to Taylor Bauer, the grad transfer from Princeton. 60% shooter, converts on both. Not the prettiest form, but a couple of points. And here's that pressure again from UConn. Are you supposed to say that about people's free throws, John? I, I, I think it's not a pretty form. Okay, fair. Got to call the way it is. And it went in, to fair. her credit. To her credit, it went in. Form or function over form. And the swallow up of UConn three ball release rattles on down for Bolden Morris. She had entered three for her last 22 from deep. She's a better shooter than that. 34% at Boston College. Yeah, I actually had an opportunity to watch her in ACC action. And I will say, I was impressed with the way that Georgetown handled that pressure. They did not do a good job handling the full court pressure from Seton Hall. And Ransom is just setting the tone for this Hoyas team. This is exciting for this Hoyas group. I mean, you talked about some of their woes this season and being um, a group that's smaller than they had anticipated. So to see them playing with this much confidence early in this ballgame is a good sign. They have been very competitive, even though they stand one and nine. That's not lip service. Look at the scores. They've been fairly close, and it's done with defense. And that one rattles on down for Kristen Williams, who entered in her last six games, four for her last 27 from outside. She's a better shooter than that, but we've seen that throughout America, right? Yeah, you know, whether it's COVID or, or the irregularities of this year's schedule, we have seen that. But I will say, Kristen Williams, the junior, who has seen big moments with this UConn Huskies program, she was the first person out on the floor tonight. She was the longest Husky out. She was out by herself sometimes when the team went back in the locker room. So she's shooting herself out of a slump. Great inside out. Nelson Adota with the drawing two defenders and finding the shooter on the perimeter. Gets a little friendly shooter's bounce. That's a, that's such a good sign when you're in a slump, John. Right. Oh, my gosh. I got one to go. And Kristen Williams, the unanimous preseason Big East player of the year. And Gino Oriema said she's going through a bad stretch. She's just not a confident shooter. He thought that would return. The reverse. Oh, that takes confidence. Just rolls off the lip for Archer. Able to try to track it down. Can't do it cleanly. But the effort from Georgetown has been sensational. You applaud the hustle. Creative, fundamental and creative move with the reverse layup. I like the decision there, just not quite high enough off the glass, but sticking with it. And what could be risky? Picking up a foul 90 feet away from the basket. Ultimately, Archer does not pick up a foul and almost had a chance to come up with the steal. 
I used to try to replicate the old Dr. J move like that along the oh, end line. Did you? Tell me more. Oh, it was, it was pretty <laughs> awful. <laughs> that, was, that was far more Picasso than it was fine ah, art. Okay. <laughs> Ransom has taken over this game at times. Bit of a chance on the pass. Three ball off for Bolden Morris and a one and done. UConn controlling the boards. It feels like the Huskies are still feeling things out a bit. Oh, there was contact on high. That's a point of emphasis this year. And Olivia Nelson Adota slapped with her first. Yeah, got those elbows a little bit too high above her head. But you know, Grace Ann Bennett to me is an interesting player for this Hoya squad. She got in position first. Drew that foul. You're going to see her kind of beat Nelson Odota to the spot and then just kind of catch that elbow there. She's probably not as highly touted, um, maybe talented as one Nelson o Olivia Nelson Odota, but she's willing to work. And so she does. She's one of those players that does the work before the action, which we always hear from good coaches in terms of getting in position. James Howard, her head coach, lauded her basketball IQ. Mistakes for UConn early as many turnovers for as made buckets despite the fact that they're the ones applying most of the pressure. Two, 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 three. Calling for the ball wide open. How does that happen? Three ball rained down by Milan Bolden Morris. A little bit of confusion off of that screen defensively. Bolden Morris itching to take that one and she knocks it down. A tight one early. The force high low not quite there against the grain of the lane and here come the Hoyas. Wearing pink in the play for K game today. The jerseys and sneaks. Ransom thought she saw a seam. Beckers denies. Hands her off to another defender. Ransom with nine on the timer. Mm. Tough miss, but tracked down by Bauer. Able to reset the shot clock. I'm not sure that that shot hit the rim, John. And if it did, it's, the shot clock certainly doesn't go back to 30. Well, it went to 20, but I'm, I'm with you, and I think that's what our near side official pointed out. So they're going to take another look, and I think we're going to step aside here. Shot goes up. Nope. Doesn't look like we got any room. Uh, we'll step aside, number two UConn down the deuce at Georgetown here on CBS Sports Network. Welcome on the back, Hoyas up a deuce on the nation's number two, thanks in part to Kelsey Ransom turning over the Huskies. Jumping into passing lanes, active hands and quick off of her feet. She's done this twice in this ball game. Well, that time, quick off her feet, jumping up and just getting in that passing lane. She not, I can't give her quite two steals per game. John, but she's got 16 on the sit on the season. Does lead them in swipes. Only four on the timer. They went to monitor review. Bounce pass, and the extra time pays off. Bucket on the block for Jillian Archer, and the Hoy is up four on number two UConn, which has turned it over five times and only hit two field goals. Seven points off of those five turnovers for the Hoyas. I have been very impressed with their poise to open up this basketball game. Poise and confidence. Leah Edwards is in for UConn. Gina Oriyama making a sub. Time is wilting. Not a lot of movement here. Mule opposite Beckers. That might have got a piece from Bauer. Good box. And the ball out of bounds. Kelsey Ransom all over the floor. This is perfectly executed. Shania Wright with the inbounds pass. Ransom attacking. And Archer just kind of left in no man's land. And she finishes the high percentage opportunity. Ten three run for Georgetown. Overplay for the steal. Now Ransom is numbers four on three. The hesitant Jay a travel. So uh, UConn looking to find some energy. They opted out of the full court, three quarters court, we'll call it, press that they were in. That was a full court man-to-man -man defense. Becker's gambling in the middle almost could have reached disaster. UConn trying to solve the riddle of this pack line Georgetown defense. The corner triple try in and out. And Georgetown plum advantage. Shania Wright has it. Remember that Paige Beckers did not play when these teams first tangled. That was a blowout win for UConn. Down their star guard and also Anam Makarat, who's been out sometime since with a lower leg injury, will send this the other way. 
Anna Makarat hopefully can get healthy before um, the postseason. She's she is sort of an unsung hero, one of the more experienced team players, excuse me, on this Huskies roster. 41% shooter from outside last year. It's something Gino Oriema spoke about with us this week. The need to have a shooter to beat defenses like this. Elbow J on the way, and that's a swish. Aaliyah Edwards drops it down. I really like Aaliyah Edwards. I think she has tremendous upside. She's willing to be physical. As the season has progressed, she's done a better job of picking her spots without picking up foul trouble. She's been more productive. Double figures in four of five. She's now nearly averaging 10 points per. As UConn's offense becomes a touch more diverse, they lean on Beckers a lot on the season. Lean? 30 points and three 30-point 30, 30 performances? That's more than a lean, John. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'm being flavorful they, and generous. All right, well, they uh, they walk hand in hand. They hold Paige's <laughs> hand. As she goes, they go. <laughs> Kristen Williams off on the three, but you like her aggressiveness? Definitely, and Gino has talked candidly about, although Paige, Paige's numbers have been tremendous, but there still has been a curve for her in terms of college basketball. A lot of it has come with her being more accustomed to handling the ball as opposed to playing off the ball. A point guard in her stud high school days in Minnesota where certainly she was a capable scorer and there she shows it there's the best outside shooter in the country raining it down yeah Gino has given her a green light in fact he's told her you know if we need you to score 30 plus then do that and so don't be hesitant good Dangerous anticipation pass. yeah Beckers with a perfect reaction using her length there but also not the smartest pass um, and there she is directing her teammates and then she just pops free can't lose track of her she will make you pay now, Yasmin Ott subs in for Georgetown she's coming off the bench for a third straight game it's something that head coach James Howard said she's taken too well he said the hardest thing for her has been to find her shot again and he's implored her focus on doing other things beyond shooting you know as scorers, particularly as shooters, when the thing you do well isn't working, it's a, it's a whole mind game, right? Like, we know that while the game is physical, it also has a large mental component. And so you got to be able to hear that from your coach and receive it. It's one thing to hear it, but you got to receive it and then execute that. And then the shot comes back around. I mean, as shooters, it's always, look, shooters shoot to get hot and shooters shoot to stay hot. I wouldn't know that. I could never shoot. No? No. You're going to tell me more about your layup package? <laughs> Oh, my Dr. J. It was Dr. I, J against, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was one on one with oh, Moses oh, Malone. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Details. I love it. <laughs> Nelson Adota wants that ball in the post, getting fronted rather fiercely. Comes out to screen, and that pass behind Beckers, and you can read the frustration on the face of Kristen Williams. Yeah. She was convinced she was cutting the other way. Yeah, a little, little miscommunication here for the Huskies. Um, Coach Oriama's hands went to his hip immediately in that frame, too. So frustration to go all around for this Husky squad, but they, they got to work through it. That's something that Gito Oriama spoke about in terms of the schedule. He said, hey, front side, not just us across the landscape of college basketball, mm -hmm. that there were so few games, so few practices, there wasn't a chance to build a sense of rotation and on-floor chemistry, and now you're playing so many games in a compressed time, it injures the practice window. Yeah, and, and for him in particular, taking on some big-time non-conference games in the midst of the conference schedule, uh, this year I've enjoyed really talking to coaches across women's college basketball about what they've learned from their teams. We keep hearing the word unprecedented both in sports and life in general. Um, but it's been a really unique opportunity to see these young women and these coaches both grow. Wide open, slight hesitation, mule off, tip try no. Williams looking for help. Whoa, whoa, are there feet involved? And there is kick ball. There's going to be a foul there with the kick. Now this is the fifth game in 10 days for the Huskies. So fatigue a factor it was mentioned by Gino Oriema and his players although they they derided the significance of the impact they cautioned there could have been some and they also have a string of five straight road games beginning tonight something the program hasn't done Monica since February of 1980 mm. and, and back then they were all New England opponents but mm. that's part of this year with schedules getting rapidly compressed and it feels like an extended conference tournament I've, I've loved the scheduling going down in the DMS <laughs> <laughs> as coaches uh, shout out to one another as games are getting canceled or moved around um, you know five games in ten days is not quite the pace of the NCAA tournament, but it is close. 
Um, in fact, it's above the pace of the NCAA tournament, so you practice harder than you would actually hope to play and perform ultimately. So I'm sure that this is a big picture thing. UConn sharing the ball. Who will take the shot? Becker's ball screen kicks it out. Mule off and a foul on the floor. Now UConn has begun the game with three makes from outside. Three of the four made buckets. They've only hit one shot inside the arc. The, um, Georgetown's done a good job of defending that painted area, and so far the Huskies haven't gotten hot from behind the arc either. Williams baseline jumper off. And weak side controlled by Ott. That last foul to Ransom. Well, 15 seconds. What do you want to see here? Execution. If you're setting screens, set screens. Not only set the screen, but set up your defender to use the screen. Ott on high. Mm. And UConn has the ball. UConn also has the lead. A first quarter that felt like it was largely owned by the Hoyas sees the Huskies up a skinny point. It began with steals, but Williams a couple of triples and the Huskies holding on by a hair. Now Paige Beckers, the outstanding player for Georgetown, it's been down and up today. You know, it's a long game. She just got to get warmed up. That is one of her go-to moves, that one dribble, two dribble up. Then here, a little bit of contact throws her off. And then this one, passing, resetting, catch. This is, listen, one thing you can count on this season, John, Paige Beckers is going to show up. She has, in convincing fashion, Gino Oriema talked about the tall task she faces as a freshman saying that all of her predecessors that went on to greatness had two or three established All-Americans alongside. She enters as their best scorer, their best passer, one of their best rebounders. And is the fulcrum of their offense every single night. Corner three, a little short. Georgetown able to maintain. Grace Ann Bennett up and under. That is one of her best moves. Splitting a defender in particular. She can also use it in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but as I've watched film on this Georgetown team, when she gets going with that particular move, her confidence begins to rise. That ends a long scoreless stretch. The Hoyas had ripped off a 10-3 run to lead 12-8. That's their first point since. That was around the midway point of the first quarter. The wing three, Beckers off and out of bounds. Last touch to the Hoyas and Bennett. Beckers went to her spot. This was a great look here for Georgetown. And then the hustle by Grace Ann Bennett. A little swim scoop move over Kristen Williams and the basket. She had 15 and 14 last time out against Seton Hall did Bennett. She's a terrific rebounder. She's in, she goes after the ball off of the rim. She's in great position. Williams eyeing the iron. Little short. Tip ball controlled by the Hoyas. Here comes Ransom. She really carried Georgetown at the game start. Oh, nice handle by Ott. Stepping back and draining. I mean, who, who, who shall we call the name out? Looking a little <laughs> Steph Curry ass, looking a little Sue Bird ass. Which one you want? Uh, that was and one tape to me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, prior to hitting that shot, Kristen Williams, on the previous shot that she shot short, I could see it. You got to get out of your head. You got to get out of your head. I'm glad to see that she came back down and took another shot. Shooters got to have a short memory. She entered four for her last 27. She's got three makes and four tries from deep tonight. I'm trying to think of what you compare coming out of a slump to in terms of feelings. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's a favorite food thing. I gotta figure. I gotta remember what exactly I would compare that to. Did you have slumps? Oh, I did. Oh man. And I was the emotional <laughs> kid. I had a slump or two. I definitely had a slump or two. <laughs> Ripping oh. off, and here come the Hoyas. We, we hear word from the truck talking about yips and putting. Actually, Gino Oriema made an analogy to golf on our call with him this week. He said, when your shot is off, sometimes you should stop shooting. Like, when you're in golf, don't mm -hmm. go to the range when you're off. Do something else. Get your mind away from it. But it, it's so, I hear that, but Gino also has been coaching for decades now and has not been on the floor, right? And, of course, I'm not going to go against his basketball like you, but I understand as a player, this is what I do. Like, you want me to walk away from what I do? 
It's, it's, it's a tricky balance when you're so trying to get out of slump. His challenge to Kristen Williams was not to abandon shooting altogether, mm -hmm. but that she was constantly going in for extra time. And he said, you're seeing not only diminishing returns, I think it's injuring you. Yeah. Just do your normal routine you've always done, and the shot will come back. Yeah, now that, that I agree with, because at a point, even though you call yourself just getting your reps up, mentally you're pressing. And so you do need to find time to refresh, little baseline drive, left side, right hand finish. She's looking pretty refreshed to me in this game, John, if I do say so. Yeah, that she is. She's forced to turn over. You could also see the expression on her face, yeah. the fuel that she's mm -hmm. feeling right now. And Bolden Morris trying to create. Hard screen, and they're able to jump that double. That's great defense by Arby Griffin to stay in front. All right, quick first step, see the defender, not concerned about the defender, inside of the defender. In fact, great take by Kristen Williams. Remember, she had that big breakout game a couple of years ago at Notre yeah. Dame when they were number one. Got a piece there on that shot. Here comes Williams. She dropped 28 when they rolled the number one Irish. And that put her on the radar in women's basketball in a big time way. That one short with contact. Aubrey Griffin, 73% free throw shooter. So we have a very tight game. Yukon Huskies stand 15 and 1. Last time out, they blew out Seton Hall, but they trailed in the second quarter in that game 21 to 10. Join the Inside College Basketball crew as they talk all things hoops and the road to the Final Four. Tonight, 10 Eastern, right here on CBS Sports Network. Now, of course, Monday, we teased it a bit in the Open, Monica, will be the first unveiling of the Selection Committee's top 16. What do you think of UConn? How do they profile? Well, I, I know I will be moving them to one in my poll. I mean, head up, they knocked off the number one team at the time, and that's... You know, South Carolina's second loss with that number one title. I still think South Carolina is a tremendous team, but I was thoroughly impressed with the defense that the Huskies played on Monday night. There's another free ball for Kristen Williams. Able to survey, doesn't see numbers, back it out. Beckers, it's been a while since she's seen one drop down. Only has one make on the game. Williams living in that corner. Off. And Bolden Morris has it in her hands again. Avina Westbrook set a great screen to get her clearly open in the corner. It feels like Avina Westbrook is assuming more of a leadership role as the lone veteran on a senior list team. Yeah, I asked Coach Oyemo who he goes to in terms of leadership um, as there's a turnover there for Georgetown. And he, you know, as candidly and honestly as Gino does, he says, you know, those type of players are, are harder to come by these days. He said, I don't know that we have a single player that we rely on. He said, Nika Mule is someone that they go to for their defensive intensity um, and setting the pace on that side of the ball. The team is pretty confident that Paige will get a bucket when they need it. But Avina, E, as he called her, has the most experience on this squad. Becker's contact. That seemed like a, a more veteran move by Beckers to kind of swing and lean in as she saw that coming in the shot clock. She's just so smart, and Coach Howard talked about it as we prepared for this game, that he thinks that her basketball IQ is underrated. I personally cannot imagine underrating her basketball <laughs> IQ. Like, how would anyone do that? Now, this foul is also number two on Kelsey Ransom, who has been the most impactful player for the Hoyas, getting a teaching moment now from James Howard. If you're James Howard, how do you manage her minutes here? Does she sit? Do you play her with two fouls? I'm leaving her in this ball game unless my hard rule is two and six. You got five minutes left. You're not going to put her on page in the man to man. You may even go ahead and show a little bit of that 2 1 2 that they opened the ball game up with. I'm asking her to be smart. It's a big time moment. She's a big time player. She's got to play. As it knocked out of her hands, lets it go out of bounds. 9 0 run here for the Huskies. This is the first segment where it feels like UConn's grabbed a little bit of control. Oh, nice crossover look. Ransom picks it up. Leave up top. Three ball, Bolden Morris. No, and the rebound to UConn. Nelson Adoda. Oh, Becker seeing Williams. That pass, brilliant. And Williams rushed things just a touch. Yeah, it was a slightly tough angle once she, once she actually gathered it, especially using just one hand. Oh, Becker sees the cutter and a blocking foul. That was a bulldozing from Aubrey Griffin. Oh, man. Catch your breath. We got a five-point game. <laughs> I felt that one. <laughs> Thank you.
Coming up, AT&T 5G at the half. Adam Zucker, Sarah Kustak in the studio. They'll get you caught up on the latest scores and news in women's college hoops. Plus, first half highlights and stats that all hit your way at halftime. A UConn scheduled three biggies non-conference from the SEC. At number 25, Tennessee, Paige Beckers, only nine points injured earlier in the game. That three helped the Huskies in their win. At number 19, Arkansas, Chelsea Dungy, 37 points. The upset win over UConn. Remember, they've beaten Baylor this year and Monday at home. Number one, South Carolina. Beckers, 31, including the friendly roll on that lone triple make. So here are the top net rankings. What do you think, Monica? Well, Stanford was once a number one. UConn is poised to be a number one. South Carolina's been there twice. Louisville was there once. The only team in that group that has not been there was Baylor, which is sort of unusual for them. Um, certainly a list of the best teams in the country. But, John, I got to say, all that was fantastic. I'm very distracted by the phone booth situation. <laughs> <laughs> right here in this building. It is a historic little situation we got here in McDonough. Um, please, someone let that man use their cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> nice jump look there by Beckers. And Nelson Adota able to convert. I'm surprised he had the quarters available, you know, or maybe it was a collect call. Is that still a thing? So many questions. Yeah. <laughs> Wide open. Oh, spread on the floor at Westbrook off, but that felt a little more like UConn, which now has assembled an 11-0 run. It, you know, they have gone on this run. We anticipated this happening, but as I'm watching these players shoot, I do wonder if there's a little bit more fatigue than they would like to let on. Westbrook, that last shot was perfectly online, but it was also perfectly short, and short shots always are an indicator of missing legs. Kelsey Ransom playing with two fouls. Mm. Oh, that's a tough effort. Tough. You got to call that one. You got to say bank on that? You can see the way she continues to harass and defend. Playing with two fouls, that brace on her right knee. Twisting Jay, Nelson Adota. No, and the great box by Ransom. She's been boxing out like crazy. And we talked about her athleticism and her length here, kind of working off the screen, but not really. And honestly, do you practice that? I mean, this is great kind of feel and touch. I, I'm a proponent of using the glass. Using the glass on your shot is the most underrated aspect of the game of basketball, especially that corner bank shot. That's money, John. Now she goes right to it, puts up that left hand effort. Not there, and UConn forces a one and done with Aubrey Griffin. Here comes Beckers. Averages well over 20 a game. She only has five points in one field goal make tonight. And harassing D, Nelson Adota, the foul. That's going to be two on UConn's big. Well, I like the way that Aaliyah Edwards has played of late if Coach Oriyama does not opt to leave Nelson Adota out there. But, you know, there, it's funny, Paige made a pass, and as Aaliyah is getting up to head to the scores table, that I'm not sure if it was going toward Adota or someone else who was cutting on the back side there, but she has such great vision, and Coach Oriana shared that sometimes she gets a little frustrated because her teammates don't quite see it yet, but some of that is going to come with time. Rainbow shot off for Bolden Morris, Kristen Williams. She had got quiet for a bit. She's been a sizzling star on the night. You almost wonder if Nelson Adota can, can feel that sub coming the way she's shaped up some on the block. <laughs> Give me a touch before I'm out. <laughs> that, that's a fair thought. I love that post up there, though, by her. And Beckers drops it down from deep. Her second make from outside. Now, it will not show up in the stat sheet, but Nelson Odota did a great job of posting big, and then it was the swing to Beckers, and because the defense had to pay her attention, you get there too late, count the basket. It's now a 14-2 UConn run over six-plus minutes. And you can feel the pace and tempo slowing for Georgetown all the more. They want to play a game in the 50s. Four on the timer. Bauer running out of time, coughs it up. Not sure about Bauer trying to split defenders from that spot on the floor. It's a lot of dribbling for her. Williams shaping up in the corner. Three ball. Kristen Williams with four made triple. She has 14 points, Monica. It's good to see her come out of the slump. Of course, unless you're the Hoyas. Timeout, Georgetown. They need to talk it over because Gino Oriema's stud guard is catching fire. It happens that way when you play UConn. A 16-2 run for the Huskies and Kristen Williams the latest bucket. Nothing but net. Now you can see there the raised two index fingers on the end line. 
on the scoreboard in the arena they had it down as a three and the live stats they had it as a two and now they both marry up and show it as a three mm. well, the huskies on the run and the subbed in Aliyah edwards part of it she's down in the lane trying to carve out space Dina Westbrook, a lone veteran on this team, the only player 21 over the age of 21. A well, good anticipation. Playing with two fouls, going one on one with Williams. They have been the two stars and one for Kelsey Ransom. Wow. Ransom is great off of the glass. I mean, this is just tremendous defense. She, her hands are so active in the passing lane. And here, a little behind the back gather. Through the contact, count the basket, that is impressive. And one free throw is off. And a foul in pursuit of the loose ball. And the Hoyas are the worst free throw shooting team in the country at 54%. And you, you know there's got to be some regression to the mean. They're better than that. And, and it's, it's a matter of just getting more games and getting more trips to the line. It, okay. I, oh, man, that is an awful number, John. Mm. You'll, you'll revisit points like that when you're looking at a nine-point game, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, the free throw line, the analogy I always use is free money on the ground. Would you leave a dollar on the ground? I would never. Uh, me neither. So now you're going to have shot clock and game clock virtually identical. You're holding for a shot here? Mm, yes. I, I only... I, this team will. I personally wouldn't. This team will because, remember, Coach Jimmy Howard hopes to keep this game in the 50s. So, take a shot too quickly, you're kind of likely to make you bet. And a few teams move up the floor, especially off the pass, like UConn does. Well, Bolden Morris, dribble if she wants. Six on the timer. They go over top the screen, harassed on the double. Two seconds, she can't get it off. And a shot clock violation. Terrific defense by the Huskies to hold without fouling. A reminder here, do not foul, do not foul before entry, only one-tenth of a second. Can't do much with that. I wonder what, the officials are checking the clock? I think they might want to add time. Yeah, they're going to go to .7. Okay, that's a, a little bit more interesting. And UConn's not even going to try. <laughs> they get the time and plenty of space, but they're happy to have a 17-9 margin in their favor in the second quarter. They end the half on a 17-4 run over the last eight and a half minutes. Huskies up 30-21. to You're watching College Basketball on CBS Sports Network. Welcome on back to D.C. UConn on top, 29 to 21. Points in the paint went heavily to the Hoyas. Beckers with eight and four. When we left you, the score was 30 to 21, but we had uncertainty. Was this a three or a two? They took another look, and they said the two was true. Hmm. And there you can see on the end line, two raised fingers, but uh, up the sideline were two raised arms. All three officials got together. The wonders of modern technology, Monica. <laughs> Indeed. And they were able to get it right. What did you take away from the first? Well, I thought that we saw UConn sort of dust off some rust in that second quarter, but I also think on the flip side for the Hoyas, they had done a great job of attacking the paint to that point. But I think when you're playing a UConn squad, you're so locked in, it's sort of draining. And so we saw a few more turnovers in the second quarter, which also contributed to the run that the Huskies went on. Time now for our Geico Difference Makers. Right at the jump, Kelly Ransom made some noise. Yeah, she was fantastic. She had that terrific shot off the glass and then followed it with an and one play, absorbing contact after a steal on one end, defense leading to offense. And Kristen Williams got it done. Take away one of her three, so from 14 to 13 points. 13 points is still fine. Remember, she had an over in the last game for the Huskies. So for her to begin to come out of that slump, knocking down multiple threes to this point in the ballgame is a terrific sign. She's such a great young woman and terrific basketball player. 
Now Georgetown had seven turnovers in the second quarter, only made four field goals. And those turnovers fueled a 17-4 run for UConn to end the first half. High low, Nelson Adota. She was on the bench in foul trouble late stage of the quarter. And she, listen, she can be in either position in that high low, and when she that gets going for the Huskies, then there's really some fluidity starting. There's a blocking foul on Beckers. That was a hard shoulder from Ransom, who remember is two fouls carrying over. Dangerous play. That time it works out in favor of Ransom. Beckers asking some questions on that one, but she just didn't get the position before. Now Beckers, a relatively mild eight by her standard. New defense from the Huskies here? Yeah, showing us a 2 3 this time. We saw a lot of man in the first half. Um, they're going to force the Hoyas to take outside shots, an area that they did not have much success in, in the first half. Now they have had a hard time shooting the outside shot of the year. That seemed to be a hybrid pass shot decision. Falls off. Archer trying to knife through the lane. Not there. And Williams able to cup the loose ball. And Amanda Beckers. Knows Ransom is two fouls. Stutter start. Rapid opposite. Extra pass. Williams. Another extra pass. This is terrific ball movement. The ball's not sticking at all for the Huskies. It's whipped around the perimeter twice now. Can they get that right look? Seven to shoot. Mule. Against the grain of the lane. Gift for the Hoyas. That was fantastic help defense. A great read there by Bolden Morris to close that gap. Bolden Morris leads Georgetown to made triple makes a midseason transfer tonight only her ninth game play now the Huskies have switched back to that man to man and in the second half if Georgetown is going to close up this gap they only shot one free throw in this ball game so far I'd like to see them put pressure on the Huskies and see if they can truly block shots and defend without fouling and not settle for outside shots and this by ransom Williams lurking in the near quarter. Contested free throw line jumper. Tough one stuck by Westbrook. Archer closed out, but just a tad late. Westbrook was well into her shooting motion before Archer got there. This is the biggest lead of the game for the number two, soon to be once again number one team in all the lane. Georgetown trying to spread the floor here. You got to get some action to the high post. As you saw Coach Jimmy Howard motioning for Grace Ann Bennett to come. She's almost got to treat that high post similar, not quite as intense, but similar to a post up situation if Nelson Odota follows her. This is just great patience by Avina Westbrook. Surveyed the floor. Okay, I have this, and she gets into her two dribble pull up. And a foul to Nelson Odota. That is. Three on her. Nice look at the entry. Becker's trying to close out. Gets help from Nelson Adota. Steps. Unable to maintain the pivot. Bolden Morris gives it away. Yeah, she's just a little bit too deep under the basket on the initial inbounds play, but she would have had a look if she'd stopped short, maybe about a step. Is that a repetition thing? Is that a coach thing? Is that a feel thing? It's a feel and it's a defense thing. You you have to force the issue when you're coming down off an inbounds play as Nika Mule knocks down that three. Um, you almost have to make the defense stop with you as opposed to taking what the defense gives you. Nika Mule, the freshman out of Croatia. Gina Oriema was critical of her play against Seton Hall. Said she had a really bad day all around morning tonight. Usually she's someone they can count on. She did have the bucket that put them ahead to stay, but was shy of her normal self. Archer trying to tip it. Friendly fire with Bauer. And now numbers for the Huskies, a three on two. All no look to Williams. Loads up. And the rebound to Georgetown and Jillian Archer. I almost feel like Williams has had better luck from behind the arc today where there was a defender, at least in the vicinity. I won't say defending her. It's tough, but in the vicinity. And meanwhile, though, you keep seeing these Hoyas outside shots. That's against what you believe would work best. Yeah, you, you got to force UConn to defend. You can't just kind of assume. And I get it. They're in a zone. But in, the, in fact, in the Seton Hawk game, I thought that both Bauer and Bennett at points did a great job of distributing out of that high post. Shania Wright, who's on the bench right now, also has the capability of doing that. You get the ball to the high post, and then you can create some motion. A play that really stood out was when they had a cutter come on the back line, and they were able to get opportunities out of the short corner. There on the drive, Bennett unable to maintain the bounce. And to your point, 
in terms of outside shooting, Georgetown entered dead last in the country, 20%. They're actually shooting better today at 3 of 12 than they have in the season. Man, I, I, and you know, it's so tough. Shooters are made in the offseason. It's tough to really improve as a shooter over the course of a season. Becker's shaping up. Williams didn't see her. Boy is also showing zone now, packing that, that paint. Aggressive contact. Westbrook fighting for the loose ball. Knocked Ransom down to the floor. It feels like the pace of the game has hit a bit of a lull. How does each side find its spark? Well, I think for UConn, they've gotten some open looks that they haven't hit. And for Georgetown, they're going to have to force the issue to play north and south as opposed to just east and west. Whether it's screening the back line of, well, now it looks like the Huskies are back in a man, which should bode well for the Hoyas. They've got to set some screen action, get some more movement. Odd harassed by Williams. Very little movement off ball. Now Ott contested, able to drop it down, and the foul call pleaded for by head coach James Howard. I'm glad that she got that basket to go. Otherwise, it seemed like, to your point, John, a lot of idle dribbling at the top of the key. And by contrast, let's see what UConn does. They cut so often and methodically, no real true plays a lot of the time. So much read and react. Becker's wide open. <laughs> and that's a weapon they didn't have in their first matchup this year with Georgetown. <laughs> She's certainly making her presence felt today, but uh, for the Hoyas, that's the one you just can't lose. You just cannot lose her. And that's the oddity, right? She's such a compelling, outstanding shooter that you want to have a defender keep an eye on her at all times. But when you're playing that pack line, how do you do it? You, you got to talk, first of all. You got to talk and you got to point and you got to find her. She's now three of five from behind the arc today. Don't leave her open. UConn on an extended 26 to 6 run up 39 23 Paige Beckers has had a fantastic freshman campaign could she follow in the footsteps of other legends and be a national player of the year I mean she's certainly putting up the caliber numbers that will qualify her look at that three-point percentage 55 percent from behind the arc that's crazy and not only does she have the numbers I think UConn is a team in the conversation to be, no, we're well not in the conversation, will likely be ranked number one. They've been top five for the majority of this season. I don't know that there's a single player that means as much to their team and their team is as successful. Immediately, Dana Evans at uh, Louisville comes to mind, but Paige is just, man. And that's the words also that Gino Oriema had a similar thought process this week. And, you know, obviously he's, uh, an advocate for his own player, but he's also been around this game a lot. And he doesn't shoot a lot of smoke. He's about as honest a head coach as you'll find. And he said, show me a player doing more for their team than Paige Beckers, and then I would concede. Otherwise, she's my player of the year. 39-23, Huskies all over Georgetown in the third quarter. The next greatest generation is now presented by Army National Guard and we spotlight Jillian Archer of Georgetown who was part of the transition game initiative in the Big East, Monica. Indeed. I mean, she's a leader. She's forward thinking. She had some great questions. I actually was a part of that transition game initiative. Shout out to Val Ackerman and Tracy Ellis Ward and the entire staff that puts that together for all of the student athletes in the Big East. And also part of that was Renee Montgomery, former star for UConn. Hard foul before entry as Beckers just got decked by Archer, of all people. Mm. That'll be her first. <laughs> just as we spotlighted her. <laughs> um, also, shout out to Renee, um, who recently announced her retirement from the WNBA as she has tons of other projects she's now delving into. And Beckers, a little worse for that wear. A little hitch in her stride now takes the contested J. And, oh, that at least is true. <laughs> you sure about that hitch? <laughs> <laughs> you can see the grimace, though. She she doesn't look quite totally comfortable. She is, I, I will say, I was going to say, she is uh, a little gimpy, but the jump shot is unfazed. Yeah. Yeah, Gina Oriema spoke this week about Renee Montgomery, who will focus a lot on social justice in her retirement. And he said they had a long talk about the platform that UConn affords its student athletes. Indeed. I mean, Renee is 
such a thoughtful person. Um, she's exuberant with her energy as Ransom hits a much needed three for the Hoyas. Um, you talked about the drought as we came back from commercial break, John. That that was much needed for the Hoyas. Was a 26 to 6 run shaping up wide open, hit the bottom of the twine. Edwards able to reset, put the bucket in. I'm just I'm super excited about Aliyah Edwards' uh, future in this league with this team, part of that tremendous freshman class. She's talked about the slow starts and how their mindset shifted. D3 for Ransom. He checked moment there and the rebound to Westbrook. It seems like there's a little more fire for UConn that has straddled the second and third quarters. Yeah, and some of that is just getting into a rhythm right. as, a, as an entire team. And you mentioned it. The five games in ten days, even if you are a supremely talented group, that is something that will take a toll on you. Now we see more and more Settled jumpers from the Hoyas, not really running a whole lot of offense. No, and they're not a really an up and down quick shot team. That doesn't bode well for them. Westbrook off good boxing board there by Bennett. And mentioned that James Howard said he wants to play almost every game in the mid 50s. If it, they get into the 70s, that's he confesses it's just not their strength offensively. Well, UConn with 43 on the board and two and a half to go in the third. And you know it's interesting that he mentions the offensive side of that but that is a lot of pressure to put on a team defensively. He said that's how they begin every practice every shoot around all the focus is on defense ball you man giving help side that only one player can have the ball in her hands at any one time and you got to be aware of everyone else and help it. Becker's contested she'll go to the line. Let's take a look at when the contact came for Beckers. Oh, looks like knee. Not quite knee to knee, but definitely caught Jillian Archer's knee on that screen. And just as you were pointing out that she was a little bit gimpy, she showed us that her uh, <laughs> jump shot is unfazed. And she seems to have worked it out. The beauty of youth. I can only imagine taking such a hit right now. Yeah, that was uh, almost an ice hockey-esque mm -hmm. kind of contact. And Beckers, who's a nearly 80% shooter, where do you want to see her game grow, though? She does so much well offensively. John, it's so crazy. On Monday night, I had the same. I said, where does the legend go from here? I mean, three consecutive 30-point games, monster numbers, 55% from the three. I'm not sure. I think when you hear basketball-minded people talk about great players. They have the ability to elevate their players around, the, their teammates around them. And not that Paige has not done that, but maybe that's an area in which it could take the next step as, to Gino's point, she and her teammates spend more time together and get a feel for one another and continue to grow. Maybe some of those no-look passes aren't turnovers. They are looking for Williams, tipped by Ott out of bounds. And remember, this is a, a mulligan year in terms of eligibility. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, what, what could be waiting in the wings for UConn four years down the road, five years down the road? Uh, man, I don't know. She's so good. I don't know. Is she going to stay the entire time? I'm not. Oh, That's man. a great question, right? And plus, they have AZ Fudd, number one recruit in the country from the D.C. area. Her mom, a former Georgetown star, is inbound. Another sterling recruiting class for UConn. AZ is tremendous. Her mom is great. We've exchanged... Um, some pleasantries as fellow Hoyas, but AZ actually joined me for a pod conversation over the summer. And, and she talked really candidly about her injury and what she learned through it. We talked a little, about, a little bit about Kobe. We talked some music. I mean, she's great, and the relationship that she and Paige have is so unique. Very good friends with Paige Beckers, and a shot clock violation as Beckers defended up top against Doc. This is that vision that we talked about, right? Just spot on the money. She sees the game. She sees plays as they're happening. Now, I'm sure that that one was practiced in terms of it being an inbounds plays and knows who she's looking for. But just in general, she's just, she's so good. Baseline J off with a hot potato to you come. Can they make it a 20 point game for the first time? Williams have been screaming for the ball, clamoring for a touch. Now she gets fed. Beckers, jump give, stepping into it. Williams, in and out. Right, the free ball. And Ott, who has been more of a ball handler, been more involved for the Hoyas, nine seconds here. Ransom. 
Mm, Trying drag. to come to a jump stop. Yeah. yeah. Drag that. Dragged that pivot foot. Um, I was glad to see her opt to attack the rim. I thought she was going to pull up for a shot. The jumper. Now on the entry, UConn not trying to rub any salt in the wound, content to let the horn arrive. We are through three, a quarter controlled by Connecticut. Outscored the Hoyas 18 to 7. And we shift to the fourth as the Hoyas eyeball being number one in the nation. Most of the first quarter was controlled by Georgetown, but UConn clipped them by a point. They have owned the game since. And Gina Oriyama has owned a lot of the landscape in all of women's basketball. The best win percentage, second most wins in NCAA history, nine-time AP Coach of the Year, and the all-time record holder, the most national titles in Division I of basketball, men's or women's. And he also likes the puck. You know, I got my daughter and her kids, you know, uh, Three boys over there, and uh, they're having a time in their life. It gets kicked down, rolling puck, oh! and it down low for Connolly. Drop oh! pass, Turnbull! What a great pass. And a little too tight. Oh, what a great back pass. The exclamations <laughs> there, that, that was Gino. And, and you know, Monica, Gino put it this way when we spoke to him this week. He said, when I took the job, people asked, how do you want your teams to play? And he said, I want UConn basketball to play like the Edmonton Oilers played hockey in the ah. 80s, the, the Mark Messier, Wayne Gretzky teams. And he has such a love and an affection and a, an appreciation of the history of all of sport and all of the world. Uh, and, and he loved that open style. He, he saw relationships in the odd man rushes between hockey and basketball. I love that. I, I think that there's certainly symmetry there. Um, and, you know, to be an athlete, even if you don't play a different sport, is to understand the amount of time, the dedication, the sacrifice that goes into any sports. I, I love, that's terrific. I learned some things I didn't know today. That Gino's a hockey guy. And, and ironically, I didn't know that Nikki Reed Gettler hit a game-winning shot back in the day the last time the Hoyas beat the uh, Huskies program. It's been 29 in a row owned by UConn. Gino himself stands 44-3 and against Georgetown. Oh, Beckers try to make the extra pass, and Edwards draws the foul. You know, one trick I found, Monica, I was lucky enough to call the Final Four of women's basketball for half a dozen years in a row. And I wound up in the regional final that UConn was in most of that time. Number one, I knew if I wound up on the off day in between games in a restaurant that Gino arrived in, I hit a home run of my restaurant choice. Nice. And number two, the way to really get him going talking about basketball was first to ask him about Philly spring training. Okay. And as soon as you got the baseball <laughs> talk rolling, then he, he would open up all the more on basketball. Wow. I, you know, you are what they call a professional, John. Hardly. I, I'm, pros, out, pros. I'm out at Italian restaurants <laughs> talking baseball. <laughs> pros, pros. Now here's the, uh, the pressure again from UConn. I, is this an environment and a chance to almost practice that pressure? That's exactly what it turns into. And, and for both teams, you know, I, I'm not going to say that this game is completely out of reach for the Hoyas, but if things continue in the way that they're going, they probably will not close this deficit, right? But as UConn moves forward, they don't face another ranked opponent down the stretch. Um, Georgetown obviously has an abundance of work to do in order to get more wins this season. So, yes, both teams have an opportunity to continue to work on various elements of their offense and defense. Ransom. Whistle comes first. You see a couple of subs out there, by the way. The freshman Tegan Flaherty, who played 10 minutes last time out against Seton Hall for James Howard. He said that she's been coming on more and more. He'd like to give her more of a look as the season evolves. And Talia Stimson, who had started the first three games, has since come off the bench, is getting some time here in the pool. Oh, great hands there by Edwards. Mm -hmm. She's, she's, she has made such progress at being on the floor without getting into foul trouble. Well, given the shot, hesitated, decides to get closer. Offensive. Is that an announcement, Count. Jinx? <laughs> I think in a big way. Oh, man. Restricted area. Shania Wright. Yeah, she she was in position. For what it's worth, I do not believe in the announcers. You don't? Okay. The only one I believe in is you never talk about a fast game moving fast. Oh, the, I, okay. That's the moment fine. you say that, 
the gods did, things, don't like things that. Things will slow up. But you can say anything else you want. You could say no you know, hitter, no hitter, no hitter. So and so has hit how many consecutive extra field goals in the world? You, you can do that. You have no impact. So you're not in on the free throws. Nope. Okay. Nope. Fair enough. The player makes or misses. There you go. I have just spun it. All the negative things, if good things start happening, I too take credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It can't, it can't be a one-way street, right? There you go. And now some teaching moments here for James Howard, who you know, was very honest when we spoke with him. He sees a lot of fight in his team, particularly in fourth quarters. He sees how tight some of these final scores have been, but he recognizes they're one and nine, and they're trying to learn how to win and finish games. I think... As fans of the game, uh, folks that love sports in general, but particularly basketball, closing is such a talent, and it is not something, it's a skill. It's something that you have to practice, that you have to know how to do, you have to have a consistent response, and not so much in the X's and O's, because each game presents its own puzzle, but in the mentality required, in the confidence in your teammates. He has seen some growth in that regard. A bit of a forced pass there and good anticipation. Ransom started the game brilliantly. The Euro, and she'll go to the line. And she's taking a lot of contact. She's got great speed. I mean, picking up that still, going coast to coast, earning a trip to the free throw line. She's got four steals on the night, 13 points. No other Hoya has more than six. In fact, only three other Hoyas have scored. Six for Bolden Morris, five for Ott, two for Archer. That's it. Ransom has done all the other lifting by herself. And Ransom's the only player on the floor right now with a single point. You know, and that's actually interesting because as you listed off the players that have scored, John, all of them have had the ability to score in the paint. Right. To put the ball, three out of four had to put the ball on the floor, had to dribble, penetrate, attack to get their opportunities. Um, I'm not sure that this lineup currently on the floor possesses that skill outside of Ransom. Mir McLean who would have picked up the foul, looking for the ball inside. Tries to shape up once more and a foul. The fourth quarter, this UConn team playing its fifth game in 10 days. Tonight's the first of five straight true road games. First time that's happened since February of 1980. And here they are, 15 and 1, 12 and 0 in the Big East. The Big East. Gino Oriema talked about the challenge they face in this league that they did not in the American, and yet they are steamrolling teams in the Big East. They're winning by 30 a game. I think. Well, it's it's inter interesting that um, Gino mentioned that. I think in this conference particularly as we take a look at their upcoming schedule. DePaul is a team that makes them think and makes them better even though the final score sometimes you might not think that if you didn't watch it. I think what Marquette has going on in this conference and Butler to me you know that group they play a tremendous defense like I don't know if folks know about Butler's defense across the country and this is a, a bit of a I won't call it a down year but they've had some really good teams over the past few years and they play great defense. Free throw line Jay off the last foul of McLean again her second. Double team trying to swallow up Edwards, tie up for a jump ball. You can feel the energy, the aggression, the, and the grit there. These are spirited competitors on each side. In our open, we talked about the energy that Ransom brings, and this is that, this fight, this grit. Uh, first, she's in great position for the trap, but then she puts some extra oomph in going after the basketball against a much bigger Aaliyah Edwards. And it almost feels, even though they've gone to a big second wave, of players deeper off the bench, three ball off there for Flaherty. The, the energy level, Sands Ransom, has fallen a lot flatter for Georgetown, and it feels like UConn's maybe even peaking. I've, I've obviously I played against Gino working in the media, covered the American when UConn was there, and, and he says it. You know, teams that play us multiple times have the best shot in terms of the formula, and I also think that that mindset sort of applies if you have the stamina to maintain it. These players that are on the floor now are still probably working through a little bit of confidence in playing this UConn squad as opposed to the players that had been in and were getting the rhythm of the ball game. It, that becomes its own obstacle, right? Indeed, in, 100%. Because you become aware of the series history and you know that what UConn represents. And, and you've got to think for so many of the young ladies, not necessarily specifically with Georgetown, any opponent UConn plays, 
it's almost like taking on your childhood hero, even though it's not the same players, but you see that jersey, and you can't help but be transformed, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, Kristen Williams gets another basket today. I'm, I'm sure that the Huskies are pleased to see her get back to her scoring ways in this ballgame. But you're right, John, 100%. And I used to, I can remember being at a press conference um, prior to playing Maryland in the NCAA tournament in 2011 and saying, you know, we can't give a team an extra player because of the name on their jersey. Timeout, Georgetown. Williams is 19. The Hoyas and James Howard have to talk it over. Time now for our fuel to win performance of the night. What do you see, Monica? Well, Paige Beckers. And you know, I was thinking, John, as I said, perhaps the next elevation of her game is making her teammates better. She's practically averaging five and a half assists. She's got seven tonight so far. Um, she's been tremendous at assisting, at finding her teammates and making them better already. So I don't know where Paige Beckers goes from here. She's got to get some national championships, I would assume. Personally, I'm not sure. Nine assists, excuse me. Yeah, that's really how UConn players are evaluated, right? Yeah. More than stats Indeed. or even player of the year. How many rings you got? Uh, that's it. That is it. And she has been quoted as saying she wanted to go get four national titles while she was in a Huskies jersey. Bauer connects. Now how about this? Georgetown led early second quarter, Monica, 17 to 13. Since then, UConn has outscored the Hoyas 44 to 15 over 24 minutes, including that bucket. That sounds about UConn. About right. Mule, the pass tipped, force wraparound look, given right back off the up fake, McLean short. Out of bounds, it'll be Hoya's basketball. Uh, so the Huskies will get that breather. We showed their schedule coming up after playing five games in 10 days. They'll get five days off, a chance to recharge, and perhaps even more so, right? A chance to have a fully refreshed practice session. Yeah, and, and you know, it's funny because Gino talked a little bit about practicing too much, maybe practicing too little because of the influx, particularly at the beginning of the season for this group because of the COVID pauses. Um, you know, you gear up for games and you don't have any games and then you're practicing, but are we doing too much? And he's, he, he talked about how it's, it was a little bit of both at points, but that he's learned that you just might not accomplish every single thing, and it's okay. Clarity's first free throw tries of her collegiate career, one of two after Mule picked up her first. Five on UConn. We're going to have bonus rest of the way. Four on the Hoyas as well. Shania Wright gives up about four inches, maybe three inches to Aliyah Edwards, who she was guarding on that block as Edwards is now at the top of the key. McLean wanted it. Goes opposite. Extra pass. Becker stride inside with one of a timer. Bucket. <laughs> She's, oh, she's so good off the bounce, that, that one and two dribble pull up. Is, is that an internal clock that you're born with? No, I think Paige has played basketball at a high level for a very long time and has worked into it. I mean, she's just, her basketball IQ. And you can see the frustration from head man James Howard. Hands hoisted above his head and then flushed down in frustration. Nice, no look. McLean denied the end line kick on high. And three seconds. And Paige Beckers had a quiet 19 and 9. She's just a dime short of a double double. Yeah, she gives that ever so slight hesitation. She kind of eyeballs the rim, and then she puts the ball on the ground and explodes right up. It's textbook. And these Hoyas who have lost 15 of 16 probably need birthdays more than anything. On high, three ball swish. Yasminot drains it down. In, or, in order to be the zone, John, you have to make it shift. The ball went inside to Shania right at the high post, and so the zone had to adjust just a bit, and then I got that clean look. Great pass. You know, Edwards a chance at the line. And by the way, just an outstanding nugget handed to us. In addition to the 19 and 9 that Beckers has, she has one turnover tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I'm at a loss for words. Our assistant turnover ratio is nine to one. Uh, man, if the kid is the young woman is so tremendous. Third foul on right. 
And so Edwards, a 64% free throw shooter, finds herself with six points tonight. Uh, she's now 0 for 3 at the line. She'll stay locked at six. And collision and a foul on the loose ball. UConn will make a sub as Piaf Gabriel subs in, 6'5 freshman, whose older brother Wenyon played with Kentucky, now with the Pelicans in the NBA. And Gino Oriema going a tad deeper. They've always been able to do that, though, right? A lot of his great teams would play six or seven players. I'm, okay, I'm glad you clarified because I was like, go always go deep. He doesn't always go typically go right. super deep, but yeah. Um, and I think you just got what two, maybe three All Americans sometimes. Um, you know, we were robbed of the NCAA tournament as many of us are living life through a pandemic last year. And I think I think about that group um, and some of the criticism that Gino was very frank about in terms of what that group was missing. Um, and he actually said that this group, although they are younger, he thinks that this group is better than that group. And when this group is really good, they're really good. But when they're bad on the, on the flip side of that, he says they're off. Last year's team was 29-3 when unblemished in the American, won the conference tournament, ended number five in the AP poll. But they've known heartbreak. You know, two years ago, 36-1, and one. Made a record 19th Final Four, record 11th in a row, lost to Notre Dame, the eventual champion, Arika Ngumbawale, in overtime, won it on the jumper. Similar Man. effort against Mississippi State, yep. Morgan Williams. Yep, I, I, yeah. That, that was, what a back-to-back -back year run for the Huskies. I mean, those were both incredible baskets. Uh, Yasmin Ott. That was a great defensive play. Looked like we weren't playing basketball for a second there. Well, Ott takes the J. Good boxing board there for Gabriel. And this Huskies team has had a long run of dominance. They have no seniors on this team. First time since 06 07. 06 07, that was the last time UConn did not make the Final Four. Lost in convincing fashion to LSU in the Elite Eight. But they won the title in 02 03 without a single seed. Aubrey Griffin brings it down. You mentioned P.F. having a brother in the NBA. Aubrey has brothers that play college basketball. Her dad was an NBA player. So the athletic pedigree on this uh, Husky squad is certainly there. And she in back-to-back -back games before the South Carolina contest on Monday had played just two minutes and banged up her knee. But it seems like she's coming back and moving along. And Beckers is going to sub out probably for the last time. The Huskies have six freshmen on their roster. First time since 88-89. First time no seniors since 06-07. And Westbrook, the only player over 21. Beckers went off to a modest applause of just her teammates in this fanless gym. Just the cardboard cutouts. Off the fake shot. An air ball, so a shot clock violation did not hit iron. And there's Beckers, who departs 19 points, nine dimes, one turnover. She plays a lot of minutes, Monica. Second most in the Big East. She does play a lot of minutes. And, and I don't think, obviously at this point, that's not a concern, but she's so productive. I mean, how do you take her off the floor? She's so incredibly productive. That's what Gino Oriema talked with us about this week. Low to management. He's conscious of it. He wants to give her a breather. But the drop off is dramatic when she doesn't play. And she wants to play. She's able to play. Yeah. Nice look there by Shania Wright. Well, James Howard said he wanted to play the game in the mid 50s. And he's done a reasonable job against an explosive UConn team holding them to 64. But. Boy, is a tough time offensively. Three ball off. Sailor Parfin Barger enrolled in January, a 2021 recruit who just officially joined the team last week, has played in three games already. In and out for Flaherty. UConn's got it, and UConn can taste success once again. 64 to 40. They have won 30 in a row 
against the Georgetown Hoyas and make it 131 straight regular season conference wins for the Huskies. I tell you what, I will say this. The older I get, the more I appreciate consistency. And I don't know that we can praise enough what Gino has done with this program. Uh, Kristen Williams, Paige Beckers, the unquestioned stars for UConn today. And now UConn stands 13-0 in the league. The number next to the U, though, is going to be changing in a few days. They will certainly be number one in my poll. Uh, DePaul will also stay in my poll. But UConn moves to number one. Uh, now we'll be joined by the victorious head coach of the UConn Huskies, Gino Oriema. Coach, what were your thoughts on today's action? Uh, well, it took us a little while, uh, like it normally does, uh, to get our offense functioning. But, uh, uh, you know, once we got it going, um, you know, it's been a long stretch for us. Um, it's, it's not been an easy stretch for any, uh, for any length of time right now. And... Um, you know, all these young guys, you know, I think it's it's all catching up to them. We need a couple of days off, you know, everything's. Uh, uh, but otherwise, you know, I thought our defense got better and better and better. You know, um, we did a lot of really good things. And uh, uh, like I said, this season's about get the next one and move on. Coach, Kristen Williams uh, returns to form, if I can use that expression. 19 points, 8 of 19 from the field, 3 for 9 from the 3. How important is it for her to get going for you guys to be successful? Well, I think it's crucial, you know, because um, uh, everybody obviously knows that, uh, uh, you know, she's a, good, she's a good shooter and she's a scorer. Um, so we, we need one more person out there to, to kind of stretch everything out for us. And Otherwise, there's just too much pressure on Paige to have to make too many shots and some of the other guys, some of the younger guys to have to make shots. And, um, you know, when we have all three of them working well together, um, you know, all three of our guards, uh, that's when we're at our best. But this was Kristen's best game in a while now. We closed our broadcast with the note, 134 consecutive conference victories. You have uh, a few conference games left to go. How will you measure the incremental success and growth that you want to see by the time you guys hit the NCAA tournament? Uh, I don't know. Uh, as I said, normally at this time of the year, um, you know, you would have played uh, 24 games or something like that, and uh, you would have had a pretty good idea of the buildup. But... Um, uh, right now, it kind of comes and goes in spurts. Um, so there are stretches today that we looked really, really good, but there are stretches where we weren't good at all. Um, so I don't think anybody's going to be going into the NCAA tournament feeling like, wow, we got everything covered. You know, I think the NCAA tournament is going to be about who plays well that night. And uh, that goes for the Big East tournament as well. You know, um, so we've got till March 1st. Uh, this is the first of five straight road games for us. So, um, you know, we try to get one at a time, as the old saying goes, and then uh, get to the finish line and regroup. Finally, Paige Beckers, 19 points, nine dimes, only one turnover. A bit of a slower start, but what did you see from her tonight? And, and anything on the contact where she took the tumble, the shot looked true after, but a, a slight hitch to her for a little bit. Yeah, she's been dealing with, uh, uh, with an ankle issue uh, since uh, uh, since the Tennessee game, and um, it comes and goes, you know, and uh, some days it's better than others. Um, and unfortunately, we have to have her out there uh, too many minutes as far as I'm concerned. You know, I'd like to not play her as many minutes. Um, but, uh, you know, she's, she's a tough kid. So, you know, uh, we've got some days now between games we don't play again until Wednesday which uh, the way it's been going, it's, uh, it's been, you know, that's like forever, you know, <laughs> uh, that we actually get two days off Saturday and Sunday and then two days to practice Monday and Tuesday. So by the time Wednesday comes around, she'll be back to, you know, back to her old self. Enjoy the rest. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. And that's the victorious head man for UConn, Gino Orien. A final score, 64 to 40, as the Huskies tame the Hoyas. For Monica McNutt and our entire CBS crew, I'm John Sadak. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. We now send you to New York City, inside college basketball, Adam Zucker and Sarah Kustak. <laughs>